welcome to The Dream Show. I'm Jane Theresa Anderson and this is episode 251-251 and the last episode for 2021. And our guest today with a dream for us to explore is Lucia, Lucia from Mexico. And just before we go over to Lucia, because we've actually just finished doing the recording, I would like to say that unusually we lost connection more than once. I think we lost connection five times. And the um, so we by the time you listen to this, we'll have, have to have edited and joined up those little losses of connection, which you hopefully won't notice. But the reason I'm mentioning it is that the synchronicity, once you start to um, understand the, the meaning of Lucia's dream and listen to our conversation, you'll see that the, the dropouts are um, a, a, a synchronicity sort of playing along along the way so have a little smile to yourself occasionally I mention that we've dropped out occasionally I don't mention it at all but just bear at the back of your mind that it actually happened five times <laughs> for those of you that have never listened to the dream show before just a little note um, we always line up somebody people volunteer to be a guest on the show and we set everything up but the only thing I don't know is the dream I know nothing at all about the dream until we hit the record button so um, you hear the dream at the same time as I hear the dream. Actually, I'm not only hearing the dream, I'm rapidly trying to write it down on a piece of paper to refer to as we explore the dream. But we both hear it at the same time. And so you hear how I begin to explore a dream, how I open up with a guest and, and you, you gather dream interpretation tips from that as well as um, enjoying the, the journey and, and getting to know the guests more. If you book a private consultation with me, we don't do it like that at all. I ask you to send me the dream some 24 hours beforehand so I can have a really good think about it before we go in. Just before we go to Lucia, a reminder of the websites. My main website, janeteresa.com, that's Teresa without an H, is where you can go to listen to every episode of the Dream Show that's ever been. So that's 251 and counting. (laughs) And of course, you can always listen to the most recent ones on the usual podcast platforms, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, basically anywhere where you listen to your podcasts. JaneTeresa.com is also where you go to sign up for my newsletter, um, subscribe, read hundreds of blogs on dreams and dreaming that I've written over many, many years. It's also where you go to find out about my services if you want to consult with me privately over Zoom or phone. And it's also where you go if you want to find out about or join my online courses. And the online courses, you can get to them from janetheresa.com, but you can also go direct to the Dream Academy, my e-learning platform, which is at dream-academy-online.com, where you can do four different courses, starting with the first one, which is how to interpret your dreams step by step. So, or find me on Facebook or Instagram. But let's get on with a much more exciting thing now and go over to Lucia and her dream. Welcome to the dream show, Lucia. Hi, Jane Teresa. Thanks for having me. It's an absolute pleasure. Now, you're in Mexico. Um, it's Friday night for you. It's Saturday morning for us here in Hobart. And would you like to introduce whereabouts in Mexico you live and give us a bit, little bit of colour before we start? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm uh, in a small town um, called Cornavaca, and, and and we call it the city of eternal spring because it's always warm and and uh, it rains a lot and the trees are very tall. It's, it's a beautiful place. That sounds almost dreamlike. I love it. <laughs> okay, so um, <laughs> of course I have no idea what dream you've brought, so it's over to you now. Okay. Um, so I titled this dream Uncontained Black Spider, and it's a reason dream. I dreamt it a few days ago, and it's, qu- it's quite a short dream, and I don't remember it super clearly, especially at the beginning. It's a little hazy, but I chose to share this dream with you because the main image is really powerful and kind of perturbing, <laughs> and it's an image I've dreamt about before, so I really wanted to explore it with you. Yes. Um, and there are also other themes in the dream that are very recurrent in my dream life. So I thought it would be sort of a juicy dream to talk about. Great. Fantastic. <laughs> so here it goes. I'm going to read it. Um, I'm in the monastery. One of the monks is singing about what people perceive to be their weaknesses. I want to be the bell ringer. 
people are hazarding guesses as to why. Perhaps it's got to do with being in control of time or in a position of power. I think they don't get it. They don't get how beautiful the sound of the bells is, how good it is to ring them and feel them vibrating so close, the embodied music of it. I'm tasked with interviewing a woman who's a practitioner for TV or some type of broadcast. I'm nervous because I didn't prepare well, so I start writing down questions I could ask her. The more I write, the more they flow, and the more I'm genuinely curious about her answers. Before the interview starts, we talk a little. She convinced me about Roar, um, which is an activist group I was part of when I was in college. She disapproves of what we did and how we did it. She pulls out a document we wrote and points out some inconsistencies. I tell her that we wrote that document during finals. We were under so much pressure. It makes sense we made a mistake. I also tell her a little defensively that, um, well, except one person in the group, we all had good intentions and we're doing our best. And then with annoyance, I say that if she's so interested in the topic because she wants to keep going, we can talk about it during the interview, but we should get started. There's a whole crew for the interview and we're having problems arranging the cameras and getting everyone seated. There are so many false starts. Trying to get myself seated, I grab onto some ropes which are hanging over my seat, which is not a chair, it's a, it's a sort of raised soft surface, kind of like a bed, but much taller and a little sort of spherical. So I try to pull myself, but I totally lose control of my body and of the swinging of the ropes. So I slowly <laughs> and very awkwardly swing in the wrong direction. It's very embarrassing and people are shocked that I can be so clumsy. They think it must be some sort of disability. I say I just have terribly poor preoception, not a disability. We change seats, we're now sitting on chairs. They place me with my back towards the camera, which I appreciate. I think it's appropriate as I am the interviewer and the object of attention should be the interviewee. Mostly though, I just feel relieved that the camera is not on me. Finally, we're starting. A woman to my left coughs forcefully or sneezes or blows her nose, I don't remember exactly. The woman being interviewed is annoyed by that. So the coughing woman tries to make little of it as if nothing had happened. But something had happened. A big, thick, horrible looking spider had been ejected from her mouth or nose and had landed near me. We contain it with a few transparent plastic containers, but I can see the spider wriggling its way out of the first container. And I know it'll even more easily make its way out of the second one, as the lid on that one fits quite loosely. So that's where it, where it ends. Um, mm -hmm. And I've had that dream of, of this horrible a spider that I contain with several layers of transparent container. And the feeling in both dreams is just this absolute, it's not quite fear, but it's like a, a middle point between fear and disgust, but it's really intense. And even the thought of like touching, even the container freaks me out. Mm. So it's a powerful, so I, I woke up with that sort of ugh, feeling. <laughs> And um, well, that's, that's an amazing dream. The um, that you know, you say that in the past that you've had that uh, that spider with the trans transparent um, layers around it. How how long ago have you, or how many times have you dreamed that image before? I just remember it once about a month ago. About a month ago. Okay. So um, and it was. A, would you say that the the sense of um. Uh, fear slash disgust was greater when you had it a month ago or in the dream that you had three days ago? I think the first time. Mm. The first time I woke up freaked out. Mm. So maybe as we explore it and discover what it means, there may be a sense of um, becoming slightly more um, uh, accustomed to it or prepared to look at it, not, not the whole way there, but maybe some, some steps along the way. Right. Yeah, maybe. Um, sorry, just another difference also was that during the first time I didn't get the sense that it was going to be able to escape the container. And this time, 
that was sort of uh, the ending of the dream. Like it's it's gonna come out. It's yeah. about to escape. <laughs> That's right. So so that e- even more so then it may represent something that a month ago was something that you felt, even though you had fear and disgust, it was like, yep, yeah, but I've got it under layers. I've got it under plastic. It's uh, not going to escape. I've got this. <laughs> Whereas three nights ago it was. Either well, I haven't got this, it's going to escape, or okay, I'm sort of prepared to open up below the layers and see this thing now. So there is a, a progression. And it's so lovely that even though, of course, we're going to explore the dream here, it's so lovely that you've brought this idea along of um, a progression of a dream symbol. Because we don't see it often, but we, but we do see it. And I think it's really lovely to alert people to look for where a symbol actually transforms over a period of time. You know, it, it can go back to that idea that we know that we don't, we know that we can't use dream dictionaries because our symbols are personal and unique to us. But there's also a sense that our, our symbols aren't static they can be, you know, if there's an issue in our life that our dreaming brain has decided, oh, this is a good symbol for that, and that issue remains unresolved or it stays the same, then that symbol may always represent that for that particular dreamer. But when you see something change and shift like it has in yours, same symbol but a, a bit of movement in that the spider is escaping this time, then we know that it's a really good symbol to trace and say, well, where is their movement in my life? What did this symbol originally represent and where, where is their change? So, you know, it's, it's really fantastic that we're going to be looking at that as well. So thank you for bringing this one up. <laughs> yeah, um, it might be actually hearing you said that, I had this sort of aha moment where I remembered that one of the first dreams I remember remembering because I... I, when I was growing up, I would never remember my dreams. And one of the first ones I wrote down, at least, was of a spider that I had somehow, like a horrible, black, like, disgusting spider that I had somehow hurt. I think I cut some of, of her legs off. And it was um, hissing or crying, this really horrible sound. And I, uh, and I felt, like, disgust, but also, like, regret of, about hurting her and, and fear. Um, so it might be um, part of the same symbol it that def- has yes. been with me for quite a while. It does sound like it, Lucia. Lucia, when did um, when did you have that dream with the cutting off some of the legs of the spider? Let's see, it was maybe twenty sixteen. Um, yeah, twenty sixteen. Twenty sixteen. So twenty sixteen. So so about like. Five, five, five years, years ago, ago. Is that right? yeah. yeah absolutely yeah so even without us looking at what it is there that there looks like there's a sense that you had um there was something happening in your life back in 2016 five years ago that you were very up close to <laughs> um and you, you in a sense you know the dream the dream shows oh you hurt it it was um and then you had a sense of disgust slash regret but of course if we look at everything and everyone and every animal and every spider (laughs) in a dream as representing something about ourselves there's a sense back in 2016 maybe that you cut some of your own legs off to some extent (laughs) that you either stopped yourself or you stopped a situation that was in progress um because you felt some element of disgust about it but that then there's also an associated regret what have i done you know the 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 hurt that the spider, the sound of hurt that the spider made five years ago suggests there's a part of yourself that five years ago was hurt and crying in pain um, from something that you may or may not have cut off um, and, you know, there was a sense of regret. And it may not actually have been five years ago that that cut off and hurt happened it may have been that five years ago you uncovered that sense of hurt and it may have gone way you know way back in your past but it was being processed mm. in your dream so yeah, mm, so we'll bear that in mind yeah. as we go through so we'll be looking at a little bit at maybe five definitely at the the last three days before you had the current dream and then maybe a month <coughs> further back and then may, maybe five years further back or or further so, wow, that's ambitious. <laughs> yeah, it's huge, isn't it? Oh, the, the power of a single spider. <laughs> um, <laughs> when you gave the title of the dream, I missed the first word. I got black spider, but I missed the first word. Oh, cough. Like, like, because it came out with this woman's cough, like when she coughed. Oh, right, got it, yes. Out. Great, I so love it. Cough, the coughed yeah. black spider. I love it. Okay. Yeah. Do you ever have a cough? 
Um, do I ever have a cough? I mean, I actually do have, when I have a cough, which is not common at all, I, I don't remember the last time I had like a cough like that, maybe like three or four years, but it tends to be really sort of alarming. <laughs> it's like very chesty and sort of deep. Um, yes. Yeah. So, Lucia, in in the dream, you're you're interviewing. Um, are you are you an interviewer? Are you a journalist in waking life? Just to put this in context. No, I'm not. Okay, so I'm it's not. No, totally a dream symbol. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we start the dream in a monastery. Um, what's your associations with monasteries? What do you feel about monasteries? So that particular monastery, is the monastery where I lived. Um, so it's like a place in my life. Ah, and do you do you visit it often? No, I just lived there for a little longer than a year last year. It's a Buddhist monastery in Oregon. Ah, okay. So, so you did actually live there. So it represents for you um, the purpose of your being there last year. Were you there studying or or on a spiritual retreat? Yeah, I was. I was meditating. You were meditating. I was training. Okay, in training. Yeah. And yet, so you were there meditating and training, which of course meditation is usually silent. I imagine. <laughs> 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 yeah. Only mentioning because you want to be a bell ringer, which is not silent. Oh, that's that's also actually a, a, a job or a role that that you have in a monastery because. Um, in order to to signal the end and the beginning of a med meditation period, somebody has to ring. It's not a bell; it's a singing bowl. And also during the service where we chant, we also ring various singing bowls. And so it's it's actually a job that I used to have in the monastery and that I really loved. Oh, that's good. So it was real. So even though you had it in the monastery and it was really good, there was a sense in the dream that the monk was asking you why, why do you want to be a bell ringer? Why, why was the monk asking you that? What was the, why didn't they understand that well, <laughs> bell ringing and singing bowls is what we do? Why did they ask the question? Um, I, I, again, the, the beginning of the dream is a little hazy to me, but the sense was that um, these roles, um, you don't get them like for a year or something. They, they change every month. Um, and people's interest does go into account for, for who gets assigned what. And I guess the sense was like, why do you want this role so much? Like, why is it that mm. that you, you desire having this? this role? Right. And, and you said it was because you enjoyed the voice, you enjoyed the vibration. Yeah, yeah, I remember thinking or feeling or hearing that some of them thought it was because I wanted to be the one who controlled time, mm. or or I wanted to be in this, in, in some, it, it's a, <laughs> it sounds kind of ridiculous to say that it's a position of power, but in terms of just like a meditation hall, you are in sort of like um, a powerful position because you're determining when the period is going to start and when it's going to end. And if you don't ring the bell, then people just sit forever. You know? <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. So, so I, I guess I feared that people thought it's because I wanted that power. That control. So e even though these are real-life scenarios, you know, and there's meditation, which is, is otherwise quiet, and then there's the ringing of the singing bowls or the bells that determine the beginning and end, there's still that contrast to me looking at your dream between um, the silence of meditation and then the the voice or the vibration of the of the bell, and um, and particularly leaving control and power to one side at the moment, and we're definitely coming back to that. But particularly um, because later on there's the there's the vibration of the coughing or the sneezing, which brings mm. up this really powerful scary symbol for you. So mm. and of course. Um, if we are speaking, our voice comes, not bell ringing, but speaking, our voice, depending on the person and the training, our voice might come from our, um, our lower abdomen, it might come from our chest and our lungs, it might come from our head. <laughs> but, um, mm. but when we're thinking about coughing and spluttering, there's, you know, most people, 
this voice comes up through their through their chest and yet to open your mouth and want to say something and instead to cough the cough is getting in the way of what you actually want to say mm. so i'm just sort of seeing that connection between the um, silence of meditation and the and the bell ringing or singing bowl vibration and the voice there compared to the quality of the voice later in the dream which is a bit a bit concerning um, and then the moment that you, Lucia, put the juxtaposition there and say, well, they're asking you, do you want to be, um, do you want to be the bell ringer because you love the voice, you love the vibration, you want to be part of the community, or is it because you want to be in control of time or power? The fact that your dream brought up that question suggests that some part of this dream may be exploring other elements of control and power within you. You know, we all, we all like we all need to have self-control in certain circumstances. We need to have an element of control and discipline in order to get jobs done and things. And of course, there's also too much control. And the same sense with power, you know, we can, we all need to bring up our personal power and really say and do what, and, and do what we want to say and do and get across and be in full contact with our personal power. But we don't want to go to the big extreme and have power over other people so control and power in themselves are not bad things but it depends on where on the continuum you are with your control or power so I think there's an element of that in this dream as well yeah for sure especially the phrase control of time is something that I've been working through in my life sort of relinquishing that um, desire to be in control of of everything I do and when I'm going to do it and how long and and trying to yeah trying to control my time so I've been consciously working through that yes. for a while which is interesting that the dream would bring you up in the role of the person who is in charge of time if not controlling it by deciding when to ring the the ring the bell or the bowl right yeah mm -hmm. yeah so that makes mm -hmm. yeah that makes sense. Um, further on, it, with the dream references, things like false starts. There was a false start when they were arranging the cameras, and things weren't quite going smoothly. So, like you know, rather than starting on time, there was oh, we're not starting then. Oh, we're not starting. Are we starting now? There was the false starts involved, which is around time. And I'm just mm -hmm. going to share with listeners at this point that um, when we connected with you, we actually after the first. Um, bit of discussion of the dream we we dropped out the connection and we had to call back and and almost sort of well pick up where we were but there was a kind of false start there as well <laughs> and we, we we didn't start exactly on time because of um, internet conditions happening around us technical things um you got false <laughs> yeah so um so yes I can see that that theme running and there's also the theme of control because when you were uh, trying to get yourself into the interviewing seat and you were trying to grab the ropes to get over your seat and then you sort of lost control a bit and your body was swinging around in the wrong directions. That that was a reference to control and losing control, wasn't it? Right, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, associated with the false starts. You had both things together, the false starts in the interview and the, and the looking like you were out of control. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And yet you got it. You got it all together, and sort of began the interview at the end. Until the co yeah. until the yeah. coughs, yeah. <laughs> so we're just going to step back a bit at the moment and go back to you said to them. I and I'm just reading my notes that I took when you were talking. You said to them that about the bell ringing or the singing bowls. You said they they don't know how how beautiful and embodied it feels. Is that what you said? Yeah, how, how the music of it, it, like it vibrates in your body. Because these singing bowls are massive. They're bigger than a person. And you're sitting really close to them. So when you ring them, which, which you do by hitting them with a really big mallet, you feel the vibration in your body and they have very beautiful sounds. Oh, that sounds amazing. I've, I've got some small singing bowls at home. I can't imagine singing bowls the size of a, a person. That must be absolutely amazing. <laughs> Yeah, it is. Yeah. So as you say, in the dream, there was that embodiment because you were feeling, you were feeling the vibration through your body as well as through the room. And, um, and, mm -hmm. and that was the time in the dream when you then mentioned that you were preparing for an interview with a woman for broadcast. 
and broadcast, whether it's radio, TV, podcast, whatever, relies on vibration, doesn't it? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It relies on the broadcast of a voice or a sound. But perhaps it also relies on having a feeling for the interview and a feeling for the questions and a feeling for how the interview is going to go. Right, yeah, that, that's the sense I have when I start writing down the questions and I start sort of getting actually curious and, and start getting into the flow of writing. That, that sense of, it's the same sense of sort of flow and embodied enjoyment that, that it, in the dream at least I get from ringing the, the bell. Yes, so the flow and embodied enjoyment that you have in life when you're writing and asking questions and thinking about things or just in the dream? No, definitely I like to ask questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you feel, you feel um, you, when you start to think about anything in life, you, your questions flow and your answers flow? Yeah, I also enjoy writing a lot. Mm. So um, there's definitely an, an enjoyment. And music, I love music. So yeah. I think there's something there. So I can see, you know, it, when we're writing, even though it's... it's um, pen on page or or keyboard on computer we talk about the voice in writing you know the the voice of the author or the words that you're putting out there so there's a sense that writing is speaking and using a voice as well Mm. Uh, words words create a vibration yeah yeah so i can definitely sense that you know i can see why you want to work um to release a, relinquish a sense of control or having to start on a certain time or laying aside linear time because you prefer not to be in linear time but to be in the now, in the flow because that's where the magic happens. Well, yeah, and, and yeah, I, I've had this, this excessive control is, has been tied with at least in my experience with some mental illnesses I've had. So it's, um, yeah, it, it's more than just like a preference. It's almost like a, a survival need. A survival need to not have, to not be um, anchored to time or a survival need to be in control of time. Which way do you mean? To, to not be so dominated by this need to control. Yeah, that's great. Okay, that's lovely. So um, kind of yeah. you, you spend a lot of time feeling dominated by time? I've, I've actually been quite successful at relinquishing that need to dominate time. Okay, that's good, um, yeah. But I used to, yeah, it used to be overwhelming. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so, um, and have you found meditation helpful in doing that? Oh, absolutely. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we've got then, you are preparing, writing your questions, and you're feeling a bit nervous about the interview, but you're getting prepared before you talk. So there's an element there of, um, th- there's still a time that you're going to have to start the interview. There is, a, there is a, a time control thing in there, but you're coping with it by being pre-prepared, by writing things down. Mm-hmm. So did I get that right, Lucia, that when you were chatting with the woman just before you did the interview, you were talking about an acting group that you used to be in? Uh, no, an activist. Oh, activist. I didn't hear that properly. Thank you. And um, was that a dream thing or was that an actual activist group that you used to belong to? Yeah, I used to belong to an activist group. And the, the woman that, was, that I was interviewing did not belong to this group. She just sort of heard about it and was very disapproving of what we did okay yeah and so when she said and you know you, she was disapproving about the document that you wrote um and you said uh, during the dream well we did that during finals we were under pressure so of course there are some mistakes <laughs> um and what, so was she disapproving of what you were being an activist about or was she disapproving about the fact that there were mistakes no, she was more disapproving of, of the group in general and what we were doing, and she was just finding some little inconsistency or flaw 
Right. How do you feel when you look back at of those years of being an activist? Do you still approve of them? <laughs> that, it's complicated. It was definitely a complicated time. Um, uh, yeah, it was. It was a, a group that was sort of fighting to um, uh, um, rid the the curriculum of, of a particular class that everyone in the university had to take of racism because um, it was it was very Eurocentric and had a lot of um, it was complicated and a lot of teachers were supporting us and so on and it was around the time of. Uh, the Trump election. So these issues were very, very charged, and it was just a really tense environment, and um, it, it escalated, and it was, it was, um, yeah, it was a very tense time, mm. and we made mistakes and and so on. But but I think, like I said in the dream, I think most of us have really good intentions, and we're doing the best we could. That's right. That's that's the key thing. So in your in your role, presumably you were either speaking out or writing out about it, were you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. we're coming back to that yeah. sense of the voice again. Right. And you know, mm-hmm. given that was the beginning of the Trump era, would that would that have related back to five years ago? I can't quite do the sums in my head at the moment. When you mentioned that the first dream mm-hmm. about the pulling the cutting off some of the spider's legs was in 2016. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then a ma- then the dream must have been in 2015 because the dream was like a year before prior to to the Trump election okay. and to this the time of my life that came yeah. before that. Okay, so we've um, uh, got the sense there in the dream saying, "Yeah, you're now remembering everyone in the dream is an aspect of myself." So this woman you're interviewing is an aspect of yourself who's being critical. And we've all got lots of inner critics. When it's really good to hear their voices and dreams and find out you know, even at the deepest unconscious levels, what we criticise and judge ourselves for. So there's a sense there that, you know, there's a deep layer of yourself that is disappointed that you didn't get it completely smooth and right because you made some mistakes. <laughs> and um, and even though you argue in the dream, well, we're under pressure and pressure is time. And again, that's relating back to the sense of... Um, you know, being in control of time and having to start things on time and wanting to relinquish that, that's that's under pressure. You're noting that under pressure of time, mistakes are made, things don't turn out the way that you particularly want them to turn out. They don't flow in the way that you want them to flow. But nevertheless, you had good intention. But to me, there's also this sense of um, you're looking back at a time in your life when you were speaking out and writing and writing out and in the dream, at some level, um, critiquing yourself about that. So, yeah, right. so I'm kind of, you know, as we work through the dream, I'm seeing, I don't know what you're seeing, but I'm seeing some connection still between where I, Lucia, am these days and what I want to speak out about and write out about how I want my voice to be heard or read in the world. And there's some part of myself that's holding back and judging myself for maybe I'll make mistakes, maybe maybe I won't always be in the flow, maybe there'll be time issues, maybe there'll be control issues, maybe there'll be false starts. Maybe maybe, mm. um, maybe I'll um, upset people because I'm coming across with an activist issue, even though the issue as you presented it there sounds absolutely spot on to all of us listening in. <laughs> so we go directly from that to getting the cameras, getting everything ready, there's the false starts, and you grab the ropes. So were the ropes there intentionally to help you get into your seat or did you just look up and think oh that's good I can use those ropes to get up onto this tall chair I, I yeah I don't remember that mm. it was so, like a weird setup mm. the rope seemed out of place but also the weird chair thing that I was sitting on was, mm-hmm. was weird mm. What 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 would be a better use for that kind of chair? You said it was like a bed, but taller, and I think you said it was spherical. What would be a better use for a... What would a person use that kind of furniture for? Well, um, what we were doing, we were sitting down on the meditation position to do the interview. And so it was appropriate for that, um, much more appropriate than a chair. And... Um, 
I've been I've been having issues with my joints, with my hip joints, so it's been harder for me to sit in that position. Mm. Um, so that feels relevant. Mm. So the so the slightly taller position of the bed would have been better for your hip joints in sitting in meditation position. Um, no, it wouldn't have been. No, it would have been better than a chair. But it didn't work out in the same way that it hasn't been working out for me to sit in that position. Yeah. So you're trying to find some way of grabbing the ropes in the dream to get yourself into a position that isn't completely comfortable. And in doing that, you kind of lose control and your body's swinging around in the wrong directions. And people are saying to you, oh, it, it, it's a disability. And you're saying, no, it's, it's a proprioception problem that I've got. Proprioception. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, although the position is very comfortable, much more comfortable than on a chair, but it just hurts me after a while. Mm -hmm. So if we take that little Mm -hmm. bit there, even though in waking life you've got problems with your hip joints, if we take that little bit there, the dream is saying there's somewhere, there's a position I'm in which is comfortable for a while, but after a while I'm feeling uncomfortable in. So the dream may be looking at Mm -hmm. a situation where um, you know, once again, you're wanting to have your voice heard in some sense, um, and you kind of feel relatively well positioned to do that, and yet, and yet, and yet not, and yet it's a, and yet feeling a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah that kind of makes sense. Mm. And um, and it's lovely then that you say, look, it's not a disability. You know, I'm. It's not that there's something wrong. I'm not making a mistake. It's just that I've got a proprioception problem. I, I'm trying to put my body in space and fi- find. I mean, proprioception is how you know where your body is in space, isn't it? How you know where your arm is, how you know where your leg is, how you know how you're positioned in space. So, you know, to me, mm-hmm. there's a sense thereof to um, go over that again. Um, I'm in a position now in my life where I'm relatively comfortable. It's to do with my voice or getting my voice heard. But after a while, I'm not quite so comfortable. I'm a little bit uncomfortable. And it's around trying to find my position. Where exactly do I stand on this? How am I seen? Where am I? Where are my bits and pieces? (laughs) How do I position myself in space? That's fine. Mm. Yeah, And how your dream answers that to begin with is to say, oh, phew, I'm so relieved I've got my back to the camera. And although this is the correct position, as you say in the dream, for an interview so that you can have the over the shoulder camera focused on your interviewee, you're also feeling relieved Mm -hmm. about this. And um, and you appreciate that sense that your face isn't on camera. Uh-huh. So yeah. if we put it in context, the growing, the growing context, we can now say that in whatever situation you're in life at the moment and trying to find your space to get your voice across in a more comfortable way or to be more comfortable about what feels uncomfortable, you're thinking, I don't want, to be, I don't want it to be my face out there. I want to be off to the side. And um, <laughs> interviewing is the is the symbol the dream puts but basically drawing something out of life and 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 bringing out bringing up a subject and talking about it rather than it being about me huh. interesting well yeah but there's a problem isn't there <laughs> Sorry. Not right, okay. <laughs> just be, just before you comment on it. But there's the problem that the woman to your left coughs and sneezes is spider. <laughs> right, a pretty nice spider. <laughs> so the person on your left in a dream can often, but not always, but can often symbolise your inner world because it's on the left, which is crosswired to your right side of your brain. Um, so it can be your creative inner world, your spiritual self, your emotions. What's on the left can be what people don't necessarily see or hear. And on your left, there's a part of you, perhaps, that really does have something it wants to voice and say. And you can't stop it. It really wants to cough it up. It wants to get it out there, much as you don't actually want to get it out there because it relates to this powerful spider image. And it's something that you really don't want to happen. 
and it's like holding back a voice. So there's a part of you going, I really want to get my voice out there and it may be in activism, it may be in meditation, I don't know what it is, but there's something that I want to get out there and I'm trying to find my space in this and trying to feel comfortable about it. But there's this other thing that I'm afraid wants to also be heard <laughs> to get out there. And it may be a thing of huge power because spiders have spiders are little things that have huge power over many of us you know you see a spider and most of us are oh it's all a spider quick get away from it <laughs> oh and fe female many female species of spiders are very powerful because they eat their eat their mates after mating spiders are also very powerful because they sit in the middle of huge webs and little insects unknowingly land on them and then the spider can roll them in and eat them so for, for many of us i'm sounding like a dream dictionary and i'm not meaning to do that but for many of us <laughs> spiders are actually really powerful quite scary things so to me i'm wondering whether there's a huge powerful voice in you which is actually really really good um, that you're trying to hold back and you don't want your power to be coming out there in the work that you're doing, which relates right back to the beginning of the dream when the monk asks questions you about why you want to be the bell ringer. Is it because you want to control time? Is it because of the position of power? So to me, there's a feeling of needing to explore, wanting to explore your feelings about personal power and to distinguish the difference between what is the amount of personal power you, we all need to have in order to uh, bring our full magnificence into light and do what we need to do and put our voices out there. The difference between that and that power going overboard. And I think you mentioned Trump earlier, so we'll just mention him here, um, you know, and, and going into that. So a lot of us are scared of our own power because we see other people that have power and use it um, badly. So it's we can be afraid of our own power. And my feeling is that this spider, um, two or three days before your dream, actually began to feel itself struggling and wanting to get out there. And much as you've tried to hide it and control it under control it under layers of plastic um, it's not going to be there for long it's wriggling out of its first and second containers and it's ready to escape and it may or may not relate back Lucia to whatever happened in 2015 when you had that first dream when you cut the legs off the spider so we could be looking back to was there an event then or earlier in your life when you did have a wonderful powerful voice and you cut yourself off at some level and you regret that how do you feel about that this year? So, yeah, that really resonates. Um, the, the feeling that I have, though, is that... Um, <laughs> and, and I don't know if this is just um, me deluding myself, but, but the spider was quite horrifying. And I guess the fear is that there's something that wants to come out that I have good reason for not wanting it to come out, you know, that is kind of horrifying and disgusting. Um, yes. So, so I, yeah, so I guess it's hard to separate, like, wanting to have a powerful, magnif magnificent voice and knowing that the real situation is not quite like that. Yeah. I, do you know what the real situation is? Are you able to relate to it? Um... I mean, it's hard to put into words, but I guess it's just like the, the issues I have with my unconscious, you know, all those um, conflicts. Mm. Mm. I, sometimes just um, I hear what you're saying that, you know, you, we, we don't want our darker side to be spoken out. <laughs> I, I totally get that. But sometimes it's a case of releasing that, like coughing it up. And then the way is clear to be able to. Um, use the voice that you want to use, choose the singing bowl that you want to choose, choose the bell that you want to ring, having got this other one out of the way. So it's not necessarily that, 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 that you want to put voice to the, the whole supreme power of the spider or the things that disgust you around the possibilities of um, 
power gone to extreme perhaps but to cough that up out of your system for you to notice it and look at it and then say okay now I've got that out of my system now these issues around power and disgust of power now perhaps I can separate what kind of power I want my voice to have and to make sure that I can dial that up as 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 high as um as as enhances my magnificence Yeah, yeah, I hear what you're saying. I, I wonder, though, um, maybe I, I missed this step, but, like, why are we thinking that the spider represents issues about power? I mean, I get the point that spiders are really powerful, but, mm. but um, yeah, I don't know if that, that resonates. Yeah, totally. it, it may not. I, 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 I was playing with that idea myself, but the spider comes up from... She was coughing it up, so we know it's coming up from the lungs somewhere. She coughed it up, it came out mm-hmm. out from her lungs or out from her nostrils, I think you said, but get it, getting it out from inside her. And so in a sense, I guess, when we open our mouth, it's not power so much, it's voice, isn't it? It's when you open your mouth, mm-hmm. you expect the voice to come out, but she opened her mouth and coughed and the spider came out. So again, it, it comes back to um, you thinking about your voice, and something about your voice that you don't want to come out that you associate with um, uh, disgust and fear of the spider. Um, and I think I was probably going on the fact that you said it, the spider was a very powerful image for you, and I probably misinterpreted the way that you were using the word power there. Yeah, yeah, I think what you're saying about expression, about like voicing things, about letting letting the voice out resonates more. I think it's more mm. about, yeah, issues around self-expression. Yes, but I don't know. With, with the whole activist um, image, then the power thing might also, might also, yeah. Because the, the that whole experience was definitely um, an experience of, of the excesses of power or, or not being able to manage power and the position of power. So, mm. so yeah, it might be that too. The, the two could well be connected, and I heard a little sigh out. In, as, as you said, just before you said they may be connected too, and that sigh may be, may be your unconscious mind going, yeah, yeah, I get it, these two are somehow connected here. Because there's huge power yeah. in being an activist, isn't there, or this intended power in being an activist? Yeah, yeah, it could be, yeah. When you look, sometimes they have so little power. So yes, <laughs> so either way, it becomes a an issue of power. And when when an activist has so little power, um, the normal response is to try to up the message and up the voice and be louder and try to get more power. Right, right. So it can yeah. be a measure of how much do I use my voice? Again. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Given that the dream immediately um, processes the last two days before the dream and then and then relates back to similar resonating um, issues. Can you think back to the couple of days before the dream and, and see why this dream may have come up for you then? Mm. Well, so I had a very calm few days before that dream, but the night before that dream, I was thinking about this conversation and sort of um, being a little worried, but also wanting to dream something that, that would be sort of juicy and fruitful. Um, so it might just be sort of nervousness or, or about about expressing deeper parts of my myself, my unconscious, my dreams to other people. Yeah, it definitely would follow that line, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that 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 make that makes me the um, the interview the interview the person you're interviewing maybe <laughs> no I don't know <laughs> so <laughs> it is parts of yourself <laughs> so I love that and that 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 then also would you know there are so many levels of interpretation of a dream that are usually concurrent and that would that would make sense of starting with the monastery as well that this is um you know in the interpreting a dream can be a spiritual endeavor as well as an emotional mental physical endeavor it's about you know mm-hmm. finding the spiritual um insights from the process uh and and so yes you know you, you are putting your voice out across however many countries and however many people are listening to this and that is no mean feat that is a wonderful thing to contribute um 
and so th there could be all that going on. You're, you're quite correct. And, and then you also put out the intention before sleep to have a good juicy dream, which you succeeded in. And, um, <laughs> and I think, though, the fact that it brought through the powerful image that you had the month before, the similar image with the spider, suggests to me that in kind of incubating the dream for us to talk about, your dreamy mind went, right, OK, I've got a really powerful symbol let's let's do the dream on that and let's update it a bit let's make some progress let's unwrap the spider a bit more so to me it still comes back down to um, that feeling of exploring your voice and putting your voice out there and what you want to say and by putting your hand up to be a guest on the dream show is um is is another experimentation with how you use your voice and how you contribute isn't that huh i guess so yeah hmm What what is it? I know, I know people are listening, and you might not want to say. But if you are able to say, how is it that you're wanting to use your voice in life at the moment? I mean, there are so many layers to that. Um, what I'm, I'm definitely in the place of where I'm trying to find my position in the world, and um, eventually, and this is many years from now, I would like to teach meditation. Um, so that definitely has a lot to do with the voice. But I'm finding myself um, quite not, definitely not ready for that. And yet, that's kind of all I want to do. And so it's it's hard to, I'm, I'm struggling with, with finding a way to express what I want to do in the world while not being ready at all. Um, and also, I, I really, really, really love singing and playing the guitar and other instruments, and, and I'm definitely trying to play more music and not quite finding um, enough mental space to do that. Mm. So I think at least on those two levels. And also more generally, being able to express myself truthfully to people is something that I'm trying to do and maybe not quite managing very successfully. Yes, that makes a lot of sense. So um, e expressing on many vibrational levels and finding space, um, not only for you to be able to do that and space for your voice, but also finding space to learn new instruments and bring those on board as well, as well as, well as finding your space or place in the world. So is there anything else that you want to um, add to this, Lucia, or any other questions you want to ask about the dream? Not, not that I can think of, no. I think we covered quite a bit. Do, do you have the sense that that spider is actually um, um, edging its way out now and you're beginning to get a bit of a better understanding about what it is and, and um, an increased readiness to take off the layers and let, let it out and see what it is and decide what to do? Uh, maybe. <laughs> I find the prospect a little daunting, actually, and I don't know if I fully understand what what that spider is. Yeah, it, and that's hard hard yeah. to do because it has been under so many layers. It's um, been very hidden. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I think I think yeah. I'm going to set you a dream alchemy around that. So I'll just put that to one side at the moment. And I'm going to ask you, um, we've covered quite a lot of things in this dream. And I'd also want to let people who are listening in know that we've we've um, we've dropped out and re-phoned you back several times, haven't we? <laughs> in the process of this <laughs> and uh, so we've definitely had the, uh, the 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 thing about not being tied to time <laughs> coming up here right. we've been we've been had <laughs> not being able to control no no, no not being controlled by time synchronicity really playing into this one but i'd <laughs> but we, we've between the two of us managed to keep continuity i think so i'd just like to ask you during our discussion when you stand back and look at what we've discussed what what stands out for you now It definitely is the issue about the voice and expression and, and the voice as an instrument of power and both my my fear of it and my desire for it. That that definitely resonates and um mm. yeah, I think I'll have to think about it and explore it more. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll, I'll give you some um, dream alchemy to do that. And I think I think you're spot on um, and particularly, you know, with your ultimate ultimate um, intention to uh, to, to teach meditation, um, 
they're you know getting your right voice there and finding the right sense of power and all the dream symbols around the bell ringing and control and power are all, all spot on there and 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 it's the black spider that holds holds a lot of the clues as to um as to what is holding you back so i'm going to suggest two things um one is after this to do a dream alchemy a dialogue with a spider so you probably know what that is but for people listening in i'll just explain that a bit more this is when you have a chat with one of your dream symbols and i'll explain exactly how it's done in a minute but the idea is that when you do it you don't think too much about it you lucia just said just now i'll have to think about this more but i'm going to ask you not to think for this you don't think it's just like you do it really fast it's like flow of unconsciousness so you either have a pen and paper or you do it on on, on your computer your laptop, whatever, and you start by saying to the spider, um, okay, um, you've been coughed up, how did that feel? And then let the black spider say something back to you and let the conversation go on from there. Now, you don't really allow yourself or the black spider any more than a sentence as you have the dialogue it can be just a few words mm -hmm. don't think about what it's saying it will come out as probably absolute rubbish to begin with <laughs> and then uh, as it gains momentum and you get into that famous flow that you talked about before you'll find that the black spider starts to actually speak to you on paper in ways which elucidate for you the meaning of that symbol and what it means so but starting by saying um you know you you've been coughed up we're going straight to that um, really startling point in the dream and, and, and associating the cough with the mm. spider because you titled the dream The Coughed Up Black Spider. So the black spider is immediately going to respond to you and I don't want to put words into your mouth and it's going to talk to you about what it felt like to be coughed up and it's going to go on from there. And from that you will understand more mm. deeply the black spider. And probably then I would suggest that you use um, either writing which is one of your voices or um, a musical instrument the guitar or a selection of tuning bowls and singing voice mm -hmm. and you um, begin to explore uh, the light side of the spider because when you do that dialogue with the black spider it will bring out the dark side the shadows your feelings about what you don't want to express or your fears of power of expression and you will begin to glimpse from that the light side what you do want to express so to use then rather than thinking about the dream to use music to use vibration to be the bell ringer to embody that the, the the light of what you want to express does that make sense yeah, so just just sing it out or, or write it out or or speak it yeah, out. Yeah, to get the light side. Of absolutely, the to get okay. out of the thinking, out of the head, and into the embodiment, because it's one of the one of the really um, light filled parts of your dream, was your feeling about yeah, I want to be the bell ringer because it embodies it embodies the the vibration, the voice. So that's a really you know, then getting back into that mm. into that situation and waking life to do the alchemy gets you back into that place. Yeah, that sounds great. I'm excited to do it. Okay. So um, thank you for bringing a fabulous dream to the dream show, Lucia, all the way from Mexico. Thank you for having me. This was really wonderful. <laughs> it's been an absolute pleasure. So I'm sure you enjoyed that deep exploration and the, uh, and the black spider that uh, has been coughed up and is making its way and changing its form between the dream that Lucia had a month ago and the dream that she had that we've just explored, where the spider is gradually making its way out <laughs> underneath all the layers and hopefully in the dream alchemy that she does is going to expose not only its dark side but also its light side and she's going to be able to take much learning forward from that and really find her voice and her space as she moves forward towards her intentions. So you might like to look through some of your own dreams and see where there have been dream symbols that have changed or transformed um, in, in different ways and, and approach them in similar ways to the ways that we've looked at them today. The next episode of The Dream Show, episode 252, is coming out on the 27th of January 2022, if you're listening to this in real time. So thank you for listening to yet another episode of The Dream Show, and I hope that 2020 two is going to be really really good and kind to all of us 
I'm Jane Teresa Anderson.